Fallout 4, just like virtually any video game, have one major core mechanic, and that's walking. So today I decided to ask the question, is it possible to beat Fallout 4 without walking? This challenge definitely caused me a lot of pain and suffering. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what? And like 16 hours to complete. So strap in, get some popcorn, like a snack or something, and enjoy Fallout 4, but I can only run. First thing I did, created my character. This is Forrest Gump. Don't know if y'all understand that reference. I gave him a nine endurance and nine agility because you know, we'll be doing a lot of running. So we're going four strength, one perception, nine endurance, one charisma, intelligence three, agility nine, and luck one. And after the nuke fell, I was in vault 111, where my wife got shot down, and my son got stolen. Got a baton, killed a bunch of rad roaches, got a gun, killed a bunch of rad roaches. Got a pit boy, opened the vault, left the vault. Okay, now that the vault speedrun is over, we were out and about in the desolate wasteland of the Commonwealth. And the first thing I did was I went and talked to Codsworth. He told me I'd been in the vault for over 200 years and that I was pretty much Captain America. Me and Codsworth then traveled around Sanctuary, seeing if we could find any trace of my son, Sean. It's weird because this, this time I'm actually trying to fight them, I don't know why. I can just literally let Codsworth do all the work here. And with no Sean anywhere, I made my way to Concord. And I do want to know that Dogmeat was not my companion at all in this run, and I just kind of ran past Red Rocket. I know it's a cardinal sin for a Fallout player not to get Dogmeat, but you know, it is what it is. Upon arriving to Concord, there were raiders everywhere. I feel like I'm playing Fallout 4 crippled. I'm so used to walking. Taking away walking out of the game makes it so... It, it makes it extremely, like, tedious. And after making my way through a bunch of raiders, I met Preston Garvey, the leader of the Minutemen. He told me that they needed help and that there was a pair of T-45 power armor on the roof that I could use. And after getting the power armor, it was time for me to try and kill a Deathclaw. Where's he coming? You ready? You gonna show up, bud? There he is. Why are you shooting at me? There's a Deathclaw right there. Why are you, like, running around this corner? Yep, time to run. Time to run. Stop, 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 stop. Let me go. 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 Turn on. Turn on. Run! 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 I swear, this is... Huh? So after that happened, I then started making my way back to the museum to go talk to Preston, only to see this. What is happening? And as Todd Howard would say, it just works. After talking to Preston, he said he'd go back to Sanctuary to where Codsworth was, and I started making my way to Diamond City. On my way there, I sold a bunch of crap to Trash Can Carla, and then I wound up at Drumlin Diner. At Drumlin Diner, there was a chem dealer that was trying to get a bunch of money from Trudy, which was like the owner of Drumlin Diner, and she just sold a bunch of crap. And me being the kind-hearted person I am, I tried to help, but I died three times. Bruh. But eventually I killed the chem dealers, and Trudy gave me some caps and then I was on my merry way. Now it was here in the streams that my YouTube chat told me to just go straight to Nick Valentine and not to go to Diamond City, so that's exactly what I did. After finding my way through a bunch of triggermen, I made my way downstairs, only to realize I am probably severely underleveled, and I left and went straight back to Diamond City. Which is honestly what I should have done from the start, but you know, whatever. Upon arriving to the gate of Diamond City, I was met by Piper. And if you've ever watched any of my other Fallout content before, you would know, I absolutely hate this woman and I find her really, really annoying. And after listening to her talk for like 15 minutes, and then listening to her argue with Mayor McDonough for 15 minutes, I was finally into the great green jewel of the Commonwealth, Diamond City. Upon entering Diamond City, the very first thing I did is I went over to their crops and stole every single one of them. I know I'm a very kind man. And after raiding Diamond City of all of its crops, I went right back to where Nick Valentine was and decided to try and finish this mission. Now this point in the game is really what showed me just how difficult this run was going to be. I died so many times that I lost count. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. When I shoot a gun at your head, the bullet should insert into your freaking brain and after a little bit of raging i made it into the vault and it got even harder and after debating my life decisions for like 30 minutes i made it to where nick was being held and after lodging a bullet into someone's brain youtube it's a video game don't demonetize me i was in the exact same room as nick me and nick then fought our way out of the vault until we reached skinny malone look at that chin right there a jawline and after admiring Skinny Malone's jawline, I died. And then I died again. And then I died again. And then somehow Skinny Malone got stuck under the exit way to the vault, which made it super duper easy for me just to cheese the fight. And after finally killing Skinny Malone, I went and met Nick Valentine at his detective agency in Diamond City. I need to find Sean. 
Baldwin's guard. So after describing Sean and Sean's kidnapper, then me and Nick traveled to where Kellogg used to live in Diamond City. Kellogg is Sean's kidnapper if you're new to Fallout. And after showing up to the door to his house and not being able to get in, I had to go over to the mayor's office. And I had to try to talk Mayor McDonough into giving me a key for Kellogg's house. And I failed miserably. So I waited till the mayor and his assistant went to bed and stole a key out of their desk. And upon entering Kellogg's house, I pressed a big red button, which opened a secret door in his wall that was just filled with a bunch of crap and like heels and Nuka Colas and stuff like that. So I was good on heels for a little bit after this part. And one of the things in this room was a cigar, a used cigar. This cigar had Kellogg's scent on it, so I gave it to Dogmeat so he could lead me to where Kellogg was located. Then me, Nick, and Dogmeat set on a journey to go find Kellogg. After following Dogmeat across half the commonwealth and dying a few times, die. No! I had to fight a Yao guy, which is pretty much just a big naked bear. And after dying multiple, multiple times, I had a random spout of intelligence. I slowly led the bear all the way across the commonwealth to the gate of Diamond City, where there was a bunch of turrets and guards that could kill the bear for me. And after killing the bear, I made my way back to where Dogmeat and Nick were to continue my trip to go find Kellogg. And after following Dogmeat for a while, I reached a point where I died to a bunch of feral ghouls like seven times. Nothing bad could possibly happen. Ah, oh, why is there a radiation storm at like the worst time possible? Oh gosh! Ah! Uh, no! Oh, I'm crippled. Can't even run. Okay. And then after finally killing all the ghouls, I reached Fort Hagen where Kellogg was. I need supplies. I was just talking that I need to go get a lot of ammo. Crap, what is the cheapest ammo I can get that I can use? After buying up all of Arturo's stock and ammo, I went and started the Minutemen quest line, and we'll go back to Fort Hagen later in the video. I went and traveled to the Corvega assembly plant, a place that was run over by a bunch of raiders. And after getting lost, dying a few times, and eliminating all the threats inside the building, I went back to the settlers and told them they were safe. I then went and reported my success to Preston Garvey and made him my companion. And now this point in the playthrough is actually just really boring, so I'm not really going to go over most of what happened. I pretty much just went and helped out a bunch of settlements, and that's about it. But if you want to see exactly what happened throughout this entire playthrough, I have a link to the VODs in the description. Then it was time to go hunt down Kellogg. I really wish you would just get up and go, go help me, Preston. I, that's the, why I have you. Only to realize I'm probably severely underleveled to be trying to do this, so I left and grinded for like an hour and a half, and then I again went to go kill Kellogg. And after an hour of dying more than I could even count, I'm gonna die a lot in this part. I, it's mainly because I have like no armor. I reached Kellogg. One thing you may notice is I have a fat man. That didn't kill him? Move! But another thing to note is I played through this run on very hard. And on the very hard difficulty, fat mans do not one shot bosses. So as you may imagine, upon this realization, I died a lot. And again, more than I could even count. And after what felt like years of trying, the main man himself was eradicated. Oh, and this has to happen in every Fallout video. Uh, it's the Brotherhood! Do not interfere. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my gosh. I then traveled back to Diamond City where Nick was located, and he told us to travel to Dr. Amari, a woman and good neighbor that could possibly help me get a little bit more of a clue on where my son is. And after arriving to good neighbor and watching a man get stabbed, me and Nick entered the memory den where Dr. Amari was. And after listening to a bunch of science mumbo jumbo that I did not understand, I entered a pod and went into Kellogg's memories. And since I've played this game so many times, I just kind of ran through this entire part, so there's really not much for me to just go over here. Shooter! I'm only gonna tell you once. Yeah! Woo! Get the kid out of here. <laughs> But one thing to note is we heard the name Dr. Brian Virgil, an escaped institute scientist who apparently is hiding out in the Dead Sea. So that's exactly where I'm headed. And after traveling through the radiation-filled wasteland, I reached Dr. Virgil and told him that I had killed Kellogg, and that I was looking for a way into the institute. And he told me to go kill a courser, and if you don't know what that is, it's a big scary robot. And this was probably one of the hardest parts in this entire playthrough. I died so many freaking times, and you know what? I'm not even gonna do a voiceover for this part. This is all just raw footage from the streams. So enjoy me dying like a lot. Oh, there's like no da damage to him. Where's he at? He's invisible. Holy cow, okay. Okay. 
this is gonna be an interesting rodeo. Oh, he's right here. Bruh. Um. Bruh. I've died nine times trying to kill this courser. Come on. Put her on a corner. Come on, bud. A uh, quick pause, I forgot about this till just now, but I actually stopped in the middle of the courser fight to go get a mini nuke, because I was tired of dying so much, so I just thought if I just got a big bomb, I could kill him instantly. So that's exactly what I did. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of it. The courser's right there. I'm not sure where he is, though. I might just run up, honestly. I don't know where he is. I blew myself up again. And I actually blew myself up more than I could even count. But eventually, yes, I did blow up the courser finally. It only took like two and a half streams. That's big. Okay. Taking your rifle and your body. This is this is what he deserves, okay? And after eliminating Well, what just happened to my voice? And after eliminating the courser, I went to Dr. Amari and asked her if she knew of anyone that could help me decode the courser's chip. She told me about a group called the Railroad that I would have to go find in order to decode the chip. And after following the Freedom Trail, I reached the Old North Church where the Railroad's HQ is. And after entering the building and killing a few ghouls, I went and talked to the leader of the Railroad, Des Demona. I then waited like 15 minutes for Tinker Tom to decode the Courser chip itself. And after the chip was decoded, I made my way back to Virgil. And he gave me the plans to build the Signal Interceptor, a teleporter that would bring me into the Institute. I know, things are about to get interesting. I then went and talked to Preston Garvey and told him about the Signal Interceptor and that I was planning to use the Minutemen to get into the Institute. He told me he'd help me, but first I'd have to help him. And he told me about a settlement that needed my help. So I went and cleared out a few more settlements before I was able to build the Signal Interceptor. I then went and talked to Sturgis and Sanctuary. He told me exactly what I needed and where to build said Signal Interceptor. And after finishing the Signal Interceptor, I went and talked to Sturgis and he told me to hop right onto the platform and that we were about to go into the institute. Use the signal interceptor. We're gonna go use the signal interceptor. Say if that's a good idea. Uh -oh. uh, yeah, we <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. We'll be fine. I'm holding. Upon arriving to the institute, I went and stuck a holotape into a computer. This holotape was going to scan the entire institute's network for a flaw that we might be able to use later on. But after doing that, I went and hopped onto the elevator and saw the institute for the first time. Until eventually, I found my son Sean trapped in an enclosure like a zoo animal. Only to find out that what I'm looking at is not my son and in fact a synth copy of him. Because the leader of the institute is my son and he's older than me. My son then asked me to join the institute and I said, no, that's not ever happening. And then I just turned around and left and went back to the Minutemen. Upon arriving back to Sanctuary where the Minutemen were, Preston told me about a place called the Castle that we were going to try and take back. And this was another part in this playthrough that I really struggled with. Mainly because of one thing that happens later on, but you'll figure out what that is in a bit. And after traveling halfway across the Commonwealth to the location where I was supposed to be meeting the Minutemen, it was time to take the castle. So we all suited up and stormed in there to the castle to take it over. And after killing a lot of Mirelurks and dying a lot, a Mirelurk Queen spawned. And this was the hard part. She just one-shots me. This is gonna suck. And after dying for a long, long time, I cheesed the crap out of this fight. That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. Is she invisible? She is. What the heck? Oh! Oh! She's dead! And after I successfully took the castle, I went and talked to Preston Garvey, only for him to tell me, There's another settlement that needs your help. Here, I'll mark it on your map. I legit heard that so many times while playing through this playthrough, and it's so annoying every time I hear it. But then I went and helped out a bunch of settlements. And then I went over and entered Vault 81, but to be honest, I don't remember why. Until I got the mission to clear out the castle armory, and I met with a woman named Ronnie, I believe. And after entering a little basement area inside of the castle, I had to fight a big ol' robot. And I died a lot here again like I did literally everywhere else in this run. What are you doing, woman? She like, got on her knees and started praying? 
and after brute forcing the robot for a literal two hours, I killed him. And then I waited for Ronnie to hack into a terminal that opened a door that led me to a dead body of General McCain. And what's big about this is the Minutemen General's uniform, which I was super excited for because it actually would give me a lot of armor and protection that I really needed. And after equipping the uniform, me and Ronnie made our way into the armory itself. And the armory was just filled with a bunch of ammo and weapons and explosives, which is always amazing to see. And then I ran around and placed a bunch of cannons down because I had to do it for the mission. And after watching a bunch of explosions because they were test firing the cannons, I went back to Preston Garvey and talked to him to finish the mission. And then I went and built up the defenses of the castle itself because the Institute was about to invade. And after preparing for the upcoming invasion, I went and helped out a few more settlements. Then I went back to all the companions I've had throughout this entire video and asked them to go to the castle because I would need their help. And then, it was go time. The castle was actively being invaded by the Institute, and being the heroic leader I am, I locked myself in a stairway where no enemies could get to me. And then I waited like a literal 30 minutes for all of my companions and stuff to kill all of the Institute people that were there. This is probably a lot of waiting here. Because they're, they're going to go down, they're, they might take, you know, like, start getting some low, but this is going to be a while of waiting. And they shouldn't be able to get into me in this little room here, because I don't think they can break down walls. And once all of the invaders were eliminated, I went and talked to Sturges and he told me that he found a way into the Institute with the holotape that we gave him earlier. And to be honest, I can't even remember if I even put the part where I gave Sturges the holotape in the video. Just know that at one point Sturges got a holotape with a way into the Institute on it. So I mean, it is what it is. But anyway, Sturges told me that I could get into the Institute through a sewer tunnel that was underground. The only catch is I have to swim in radioactive water. And after making my way through the sewer tunnel and dying a few times, I've died so much in this playthrough, I'm actually starting to lose my mind at this point. Then we reached the Institute, and I used the signal relay to bring the Minutemen in there with me so I wouldn't have to fight them alone. And after talking to Preston, he gave me a bomb and told me that I have to go put it under the reactor of the Institute and blow the place sky high. But first, I'd have to reach said reactor. I am going to do what I did in the melee only run. I'm going to open this door. Go get him. And after sitting and waiting for a lot of the least important members of the Minutemen to kill all the synths so I can make my way through the building, I reached the main hub of the Institute, did a little bit more waiting until I had to go up to where the father was in his room to see if I could deactivate the lockdown that was going on. And I pretty much just told him that he's dead to me and he's no longer my son, and that I thought he was a disappointment. I'm a very good father, I know. <laughs> and after deactivating the lockdown, I made my way into the hallway right before where the reactor room was, and got caught in a death loop and had to reload my save like an hour back, and I actually got so mad at this point that I closed the game and ended the stream for that day, only to come back two in real life days later and continue the run. Okay, we're going to hopefully do this and not get caught in another death loop because that was really annoying. Headshot. Bruh. Well, what do you get when you chop a cow's leg off? Ground beef. That's a joke I've heard a million times. And after making my way through the entirety of the Institute again, I reached the reactor room and I actually just ran through this entire area and placed the bomb on the reactor itself and was teleported right back to the relay. And right before me and the Minutemen left, a boy, the robot version of my son, Sean, was asking if he could go home with me, and of course, I said sure. And then me and the Minutemen teleported out of the Institute and on top of the mass fusion building. Boys, it took us over 16 hours of torture of struggle to reach this point this point that we've been working so hard for for all this time we have officially completed fallout 4 as forrest gump it's beautiful but with that i answered the question can you beat fallout 4 without walking. And I just want to say thank you so much for watching because it really, really does mean a lot to me. I spent a lot of time working on this video. And also, thank you guys so, so much for a thousand subscribers. That is really amazing. And I love that we just finally reached that milestone. I've been doing YouTube for a really long time and the amount of growth we've had over the past couple months is just crazy. And I really, really could not stress that enough. Thank you. But hey, if you made it this far into the video and you're not already subscribed, consider subscribing. It would really, really mean a lot to me. But with that, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.